The Black Keys on XFM on Sunday morning, and this is the Josh Willicombe Show. We used to be on... We were, we were on Saturday mornings for 18 months, probably, now. Pretty much. Pretty much. We've now we've now swapped. If you're if you're listening for uh, John and Ellis, uh, then you've tuned in six days too early. <laughs> but don't worry, because we're better. So, um... <laughs> Ooh. Well, you might, you might as well get involved. You might as well, you know... We might as well set up a rivalry. Um, we, we've moved to Sundays. Um, they've moved to Saturdays. We get to watch Football Focus again. They can enjoy sat Sunday Sunday brunch. <laughs> That's the deal. Obviously, there won't be. They'll be listening in, I imagine. There won't be. John Robbins in Edinburgh. He's not going to be up till one o'clock. Um, so, so the show... It's, it's a well-worn show. We've, we've, tried, we've pepped it up, though, for Sunday mornings. Um, N Neil wanted me to t tell you uh, who I am. So, I, I was born in Devon. I wasn't, I wasn't actually, I was born in London, but um, it's a shortcut, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Well, not the time, Neil. I was going to say, I'll update your Wikipedia page. No, it does... <laughs> this is the kind of thing you'll be tuning into. Um, that's pr producer Neil, I was replaced producer Dave. I, I um, I, uh, from the last leg, uh, mock the week, etc. You hate this, don't you? I hate that, because it sounds like, you know, that doesn't define you as a man. <laughs> what does? What does? Just love and life, mate. <laughs> no? <laughs> Don't know about you. I'd say, I'd say what defines you is instant porridge. That's what you're always eating. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, speak as a father. Cheap, nutritious, goes with a variety of things, has no flavour of its own. Exactly, exactly. It's, the women of, uh, of the are listening will be delighted to hear that you go with a variety of things. <laughs> Um, so we, we've got various, uh, we, we'll be doing well, some of the normal features, we've got some new features. Let's be honest, Nish Kumar was getting tired, we're all, we were all getting tired of him, so, so we've, we've put him on ice. <laughs> we've replaced him with a brilliant comedian, Nathaniel Metcalf, whose Edinburgh show was great when I saw him in Edinburgh. We've got our uh, guest, Simon Evans, from Live at the Apollo, etc. Mock the Week, etc. <laughs> I mean, I'm very excited, Neil. What would you normally be doing at this time on Sunday morning? Uh, watching CBeebies. Because I have a child. Yeah, because you have a child. That's, that's, that, thank God you cleared that up in the current climate. Josh Sunday morning, the Josh Widdicombe Show, now available on the day of rest. <laughs> that's, uh, that's our new slogan, isn't it? Yep, okay. Can we get a, um, can we get one of those, uh, I think they're called stings. Can we get one of them made up with now available on the day of rest? Yep. Oh, oh, we could have, on the seventh day, God listened to Josh Widdicombe on XFM. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing all these days. <laughs> I think that'd be good. Yeah. I don't think that, that's fine, isn't it? All welcome at the Church of Josh Widdicombe. We're all welcome at the Church of Josh Widdicombe, with maybe some, like, bell sound effects, <laughs> some campanology. That's what it's called, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, they, these aren't the topics we're talking about today. Campanology anecdotes. Text us in, 83936, or tweet us at XFM. That is a genuine, uh, if you want to, if that's fine. It's not It's not an official topic, but if you've got anything, we're not going to turn it away at our church, are we? Um, two topics we want to talk about today. Uh, number one, now we've covered this before, about 15 months ago, but I feel it's time to... A, we're on a Sunday. B, this happened to you this week. Worst flatmate, um, you went to Edinburgh Festival, Neil. We went to Edinburgh Festival. We did. We were at Edinburgh Festival. You you decided to stay at Airbnb because you feel you're too good for hotels. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, I'm too good for hotels. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I had a room in a flat. Yep. And the first night I went home, the door was shut on the other person's room. And I just heard some aggressive um, lovemaking. Yeah. Went to sleep, that was fine. Got up next morning. You went straight to sleep like that? Yep. Did it not put you off your sleep? If anything, it's actually the kind of the slight movement of the house lulled you to sleep like you're on a train. <laughs> yep, I'll stick with that. Uh, <laughs> so I got up the next morning, that room had been vacated. I went into Edinburgh, we did our Edinburgh show. Um, mm. Got home that night and the door was closed again, so clearly someone had moved in. Yeah. I woke up the next morning. So is it just like an open house? Is there anyone in charge? The person's the person who owns the flat, their mum, kind of gives people keys and keeps it clean and stuff like that. They didn't keep it clean. That was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> keep it clean, guys. <laughs> anyway, I woke up the next morning to hear someone playing the piano. I had Ooh, no idea the flat had a piano. The it others. Quite scary. Mm. Went in the bathroom, had a shower, came back in, into my room. Textbook. Wearing just a towel and stuff. 
Uh, there was what, what do you mean on stuff? I, I kind of was putting on a t-shirt. Like a someone... headdress. <laughs> <laughs> when someone knocked at the door, I put on a t-shirt. Yeah. So that was the stuff. Prude. And then I was faced with the German family just w- wanting me to introduce myself. Who yeah. had a small boy who pushed past me and just sat on my bed. Oh my word, yeah. It was really awkward. Yeah. Now, you've told me this before, <coughs> but every time it does spook me out a bit. What? You sure they... You sure you weren't going <coughs> to move out and then they were going to go, there was no German family, but there was a German family that died here a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, they were very much uh, real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's, I mean, so that, that's just a string of bad houseways. Have I ever told you about, I'm not saying this bad man is like, I'm not going to slag off someone that I used to know. You can judge for yourself. I had a flatmate who's, um, whose dad won Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Wow. Yeah, um, and he gave him, um, uh, say, a, a section of the money. He, like, won the full thing. Okay. Yeah, and um, so this guy quit his job and uh, dedicated li- his life to making a um, a human-sized Jenga. <laughs> <laughs> he'd, no- he'd never used a saw before. He had to go and buy all the tools. <laughs> Spent weeks, like, sanding in the backyard. <laughs> Not a euphemism. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> and then he never played the Jenga but he, it was just like a project to make the Jenga and then he read on the internet that you only needed three hours sleep a night if you had three 20 minute naps <laughs> and um, so he'd set about trying to achieve that and failed miserably he was the most moody man I've ever met uh, during the sleep period it wasn't great when it wasn't during the sleep period but during that period he was he was particularly uh, arch um, so we're looking for your worst flatmates. I, I've also got another one I'll tell you later because we, we're um, about um, when one of my flatmates moved out without telling any of us. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you have stories on your worst flatmate, eight three nine three six or tweet us at XFM. You've got one more thing you want from the listeners, Neil? Uh, minor irritants. Okay. In, in life. Yeah. Because it's. Is been... this about to get personal? Uh, well, me- no, no, not like that. I see right. what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It started raining a lot this week across the UK. And yep. for anyone over six foot, I think you'll feel my pain when I say people with umbrellas need to have a license. <laughs> How would that? Do, 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 well, you have to pass the test. You have to show it. Maybe they should just make umbrellas really, really tall, like a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why not? But then giraffes would have an issue. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. wait, so you're looking for things that just irritate you, like minor things that irritate you. Yeah. That other people find completely fine. Yeah, probably. Yeah, okay, uh, that's, that's fair enough, that's fair enough. Um, you know, umbrellas. I get the umbrellas situation as well. And I'm five foot six and a half. Okay. So what you've got to remember, Neil, is there are some people that are really short that are causing problems for the medium-heighted. Medium? Maybe we, well, you know those umbrella hats? <laughs> we should all Maybe wear those. We should all wear those. Or coats. Josh Josh Whittacombe on Sunday morning on XFM. Feel at home now. <laughs> Can't even remember Saturday. Eh, lads? Etc. <laughs> That's not how I meant it. Um, now we are... Um, Neil, your call for minor irritants has created a bit of an issue. Um, I'm not sure people should be calling for corporal punishment over noisy eaters. <laughs> or, or capital punishment for people driving slowly in a narrow road. <laughs> Turns out what you've done is you kind of... Scratch the underside of a very angry Briton. I think this could be something that we do every week. No, we don't want, we don't want to stir up the nation. We don't want to start a revolt. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, on, on your umbrella thing, um, uh, Helena, so your, your issue with people, you, you, what, your blanket ban on umbrellas, or at least some kind of umbrella licence that you're looking for. Yeah. Helena's added that they are pointless in the UK because the wind is so strong the rain doesn't come top to bottom anyway. <laughs> Which I think is the phrase... <laughs> so, but you could walk with your angle. Why don't you could walk with an angled umbrella? Yeah, and that's what the sea one, see through ones are for. Surely that must be it. So you can walk straight into the rain. Yeah. Why don't we? I tell you what. I'm. I mean, I discussed this before, but I'll discuss it again. We need those things that you put over um, uh, um, prams. I just think we should walk around. If you're that worried, in a tent. <laughs> Perspex tent. A perspex tent. A transparent, what? sorry. Perspex Tr- being perspex really tent solid. Really, yeah, really intense. No pun intended. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's a roller coaster ride. Josh Widdicombe. 
Duncan Ancy on XFM on Sunday morning. What are you laughing at, Neil? Tell people what you were doing. It's just watching a Swansea score their second goal against Manchester United in glorious Technicolor on our TV. Um, this is Josh Widdicombe on XFM on a Sunday morning. Previously, goals on Sunday wasn't an option when we were doing the Saturday show, so it's your own fault, Neil. Uh, now, uh, any other business? This is the moment of the show when we uh, l- listen to the readers' uh, uh, responses, issue listeners' uh, response. I, li- I like the idea that they're readers, mate. I'm, I'm, well, by the word, by the phrase readers, I just mean the kind of like reading, quite kind of well read. <laughs> just quite a lot of readers in our uh, audience. Very few people that haven't, you know, thumbed Dan Brown's <laughs> book. Book. Oh come on, grow up! I was trying to think of a title for his book. I couldn't remember. It's Da Vinci Code, isn't it? Have you read it? No. Me neither. So let's move on from that topic. Any other business in which we are looking? Uh, for your pedantic points about our show. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a bit like um, you're right to reply, really, just to pick us up on the most minor things we've got wrong. If we uphold it, Neil will play... There we go. And if we uh, reject it... There you go, new sound. Hello, I am emailing regarding a couple of weeks ago when you mentioned Colchester Zoo. That's right, listeners. It's pretty exciting on the Josh Whittacombe Show. Hello, I'm emailing regarding a couple of weeks ago when you mentioned Colchester Zoo. You stated that Colchester Zoo doesn't have penguins. <laughs> I would like it officially minuted that Colchester Zoo does, in fact, have quite a few penguins. I was concerned that your error would mean that penguin lovers in the world missed out on visiting some lovely little birds. Thanks for considering my amendment, Catherine. Now, Catherine, this was corrected on the day. It was. It was corrected by Ivo Graham, who Googled Colchester Zoo and then corrected it later on because he realised we'd made a slight... So, she, so I, d- I don't know if we can uphold this. Um, I mean, it's good to get the point out again that if you want to see penguins, head to Colchester Zoo. And the reason we were talking about that was because... Uh, we saw uh, uh, someone had seen Kieran die doing an impression of a penguin for his family. I mean... Two obvi- reasons to visit. Two reasons to visit. I don't know if he's always there. All, all day on Sunday. Not now. Not now we're on. Um, in episode 73 of your fine podcast, Mike Wozniak was discussing a passed out Power Ranger. Once again, this is the kind of thing that will come up again and again. During this discussion, he referred to, open quotes, the other three Power Rangers standing over him, closed quotes. I immediately felt confused, as this would imply a total of four Power Rangers. The Power Rangers squads in the various TV series and films generally consist of either five or six members, but not four. Yours pedantically, Joseph. Neil? I, um, I wasn't sure about this, so I did some research, and uh, Joseph has done his research as well because he's correct, so... There we go, and uh, Mike Wozniak will not be booked again after that. Dear Josh and Neil, this is the final one. I have recently discovered your show via the podcasts. Thank you very much. And, while sunbathing in Spain, bit too graphic, (laughs) have an AOB relating to episode 60, open brackets, or 62 by Neil's assertion that the first podcast contained three episodes, close brackets. So what was the ruling on that? All all podcasts now need to refer to it in a plus two manner? No, because that's going to get very confusing. Okay, fine. In full pedant mode, I'd like to raise a grammar point, open brackets, simultaneously get my radio, name on the radio please, close brackets. Thusly... I wonder whether Cara O'Neill is using big words. You know like when Joey put uh, his letter through the thesaurus app? <laughs> I wonder whether Cara O'Neill thusly, simultaneously, an assertion, and Spain. Unbelievable. <laughs> thusly, I mean, what's wrong with Portugal? Thusly, in an aforementioned episode, you said, is there children? As children are plural, this should have been, are there children? Somewhat disappointingly, for what is usually an articulate show, yours grammatically, Cara O'Neill. I guess she's right. We don't want to admit it. This is, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm glad she recently discovered our podcasts, but um, she also recently discovered a dictionary, and she is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she is correct. So I think we have to, by the rules of the game, you have to uphold. However little you like someone. No, only, only joking, Cara, of course. She's listening to via the podcast, so she can care less that we move to Sundays. Um, <laughs> if you have any 
uh, any other business, uh, just email in josh at xfm.co.uk. Josh Widdicombe. But blur, beetle, worm. I couldn't decide which words word start with that and kind of just said blur. Which is it's an issue on the Josh, the Josh Riddick on Sunday mornings. I think we've established that by now. I suppose if people have just tuned in. Um, that's what it is. <laughs> that's the deal. Get on board. That's how it's going to work from now on. We're not going to be able to say blur or beetle, bum. We are talking about two things this morning on the Josh Riddick show. Number one, um, we are talking about uh, bad flatmates. Now, earlier I promised... Um, I tell, well, I had a flatmate at the first year of uni. He wasn't a bad flatmate, but um, obviously he thought we were. Um, because in the final week of uh, our halls at university, he, um, the uh, inspector came out and they said, we just want to check, um, we'll call him X. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to come up with a fake name, because then what if someone's got... I didn't know you lived with Malcolm. Well, Malcolm X. Yeah, well, it was... You know, people get people are quite politicised at university at that age, aren't they? It's actually it was Professor X. Um, but it's strange those two. I don't think they were related, but they did have the same surname, didn't they? Um, any other X's? Uh, Jamie XX. Jamie XX. Oh, who was the, the, the? No, that doesn't even work. I mean, I don't think that, I don't think. It, what is Jamie XX's surname? I don't know. I like it when they do that thing. They used to do in Smash Hits where they'd call him, like, Damon Blur. <laughs> you know, like, they'd refer to the boat, Robbie, take that. I think we should do that more. Luke Kooks. I mean, I don't think he ever featured in Smash Hits. Although they did start quite a long time ago. Now, um, we are... Uh, we're talking about uh, the worst flatmate. We, we will come to the person that left. I'm, I'm just going to keep trailing that throughout the show. But uh, so, someone who's called themselves Simple Lampoon, um, don't think that's a real name, he's put a uh, spearfishing housemate, which is a good start. He don't, I don't know if this is UK-based. <laughs> I'd like to know whether Simple Lampoon was... If he's living in Thailand or something, or whatever makes it more... If, if he was living in, like, Birmingham. Birmingham Uni. In Birmingham Uni. And the guy was going down the canal with a spear. Um, came home to a giant live lobster in the fridge. He thought it would sleep there. It didn't. <laughs> I like the phrase it didn't because it implies it got out. <laughs> you can't... Can you get out of a fridge? Um, I get... Well, I don't know. I think a human could, but I'm not sure a lobster could. No, I wouldn't know, I suppose. I think it would be able to answer whether the light turns off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get people who would occasionally get stuck in, like, you know those fridge rooms at, like, a supermarket? There's occasionally someone who gets stuck in a fridge room, but, um, and they didn't go to sleep either. Um, the other one is minor irritations. Uh, this is based on your hatred of umbrellas, Neil. This, this is brilliant. Mr. David Beard. And he's, he's right to call himself Mr. because he deserves a big title. My minor irritation is me. And this is his reason. I always take my trousers off when I do a number two at home and in public. I don't like creased knees. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's astonishing. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's not a thing, is it? Does anyone else do that? <laughs> I mean, what? So where does he put them? Does he, like, hold them up? Well, in public, yeah. You uh, well, in public you get that hook for your coat. So is he holding... But not always. Not always, no, but what kind of trousers are you wearing? Like a kind of... Oh, a if it's skinny jeans, it's awkward. A skinny jean, but that wouldn't crease the knees, would it? I don't know. That <laughs> <laughs> Like that crinkly, like, maybe, like that crinkly kind of potato sacky style trousers. Yep. Da Mr. David Beard, we want more information on this. Not on the number two section, on the trousers bit. <laughs> what do you do in public? What trousers are you wearing? And why don't you like crease knees? Josh. Widdicombe. And we have responses, Neil, from uh, well, the questions we asked of Mr. David Beard. Earlier on, uh, Mr. David Beard had emailed in to say that he um, takes his trousers off uh, when uh, going for a number two because he doesn't like crease knees. We asked what trousers they were. He has responded, jeans, mate. Doesn't need them, mate. I mean, I wouldn't... If anything, I wouldn't... I've, I've become less... I don't want to be familiar with David Beard after what he's told us. I don't think it's a building block for a friendship. Jeans, mate. I can't be bothered to keep ironing the knees. My girlfriend thinks I'm weird. I hate creases. <laughs> I mean... I don't know... What... I mean, I don't want to get into a dialogue, but what style jeans are we thinking? 
Do, um, intern Charles also pointed out he'd have to take his shoes off as well. <laughs> yeah. And that if he hung them over the door frame in a, over the door in a, in a toilet, then they might get nicked. I know who's going to nick crease jeans. <laughs> Certainly not David Beard. Um, so, um, uh, other other things uh, that we did discuss... Oh, by the way, DTU Denim have emailed in to say, skinny jeans would not crease if you pulled them down past the knee. Open brackets, about the guy on your show, close brackets. I understand who it's about. <laughs> they've they've, they've, la they've labelled it hashtag trouser problems. <laughs> One for the future. One for the future, <laughs> hashtag trouser problems. Also, uh, we did discuss whether anyone's ever been stuck in a freezer at a supermarket... Um, and, uh, Duna94, I've been stuck in a walk-in freezer at work before. I could get out. Okay, technically not stuck in, I suppose. No, <laughs> no, not at all. That's not an anecdote. Basically, the anecdote is I've been in as a walk-in freezer. Have you ever worked anywhere with a walk-in freezer? I haven't, no. Not no. you. Yeah, yeah, I worked at, um, Safeway. That's how long ago that was. <laughs> <laughs> There's a blast from the past. Um, coming up, uh, Nathaniel Metcalf, a brilliant comedian, has uh, his um, previews of the week's television uh, from the mid-90s. Josh Widdicombe, as it's As we've moved to Sunday, we thought we'd uh, start a new feature. of. Uh, we, we thought we'd do a TV, pre well, TV previews from history. Is that a thing? Well, let's see. Nathaniel Metcalf, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good, good, good. And uh, now you're... Uh, I'm loath to use the word TV historian. <laughs> Mainly yeah, yeah, I would be too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mainly because you're not. You're a comedian. But um, <laughs> what you're going to do for us uh, is you, you're, you're a fan of TV, particularly from the past. I certainly am. So you're going to do the week's TV previews from which week? Well, I've got it. I've got so the TV listings from the 29th of August. 1998. <laughs> classic ago. week. Classic week. God, it's two months. Well. David Beckham still a still a, a pariah within <laughs> England for his uh, red card at the World <laughs> Cup. The Spice Girls topping the charts. What will we watch on TV, Nathaniel? Well, this was uh, the bad news to begin with. It's 10:30 on a Saturday. You want to watch a chart show, but it's been cancelled. Oh, been cancelled. The, the the ITV chart show has been cancelled. The ITV Kit Out Show has been cancelled, but it's been replaced with two shows, SMTV and CDUK. I, I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm not, I'm not sure this is going to work for the ITV. I think they've made a massive mistake. Rather than cancelling yeah, well, it, do you think they just paused it and then speed fast forwarded through it? <laughs> Maybe. Well, do you know, do you know old uh, PJ and Duncan from Biker Grass? Yeah, yeah, I'm aware of them, yeah. They're, o they're only hosting it. Oh, no. <laughs> this isn't going to work. Is there a female foil as well? There is. Cat Dealey, who currently is an unknown quantity <laughs> in the mix. Well, I'm, I'm hopeful she's for a, her. She's a, she's a hot starlet. Yes. She's, uh, she's on the up and up. Well, she's on the up and up, I think, at this point, yeah. What, what, else, is on, what else is on for us this weekend? Well, of course, 7 o'clock, we got a hot new BBC One action series. I'm sure it's going to run and run. Bugs. <laughs> Bugs. <laughs> with, with, uh, with Craig McLaughlin from, uh, from Neighbours. Yeah, Craig McLaughlin from Neighbours, Jesse Birdsoft from El Dorado. Oh, yes. <laughs> it, is, it is, I mean... What's the premise? With, with a cast like this, I mean, uh, it's going to run and run, I'm sure. <laughs> What's the premise? Well, it's, uh, they're, they're um, experts in uh, robotics and mechanics, <laughs> and they will use these skills to help them solve crime or espionage <laughs> or something. <laughs> I don't see why this... I don't know how this is not going to work. F fine. Well, I imagine a series like this will still be going as far forward as the year 2014. <laughs> I imagine it will be. What, what's the final show you've got for us as well this weekend? Well, the final show, it's 12.55am, uh, technically Ooh. Sunday morning. Yeah. Uh, Baywatch Nights. Oh. Baywatch Nights, the <laughs> spin-off spin from Baywatch. So what, is it more racy? Where? Can it be more racy? Yeah, well, it's not like Hollyoaks Lakes. It's not. It's, um, <laughs> it's, uh, this is more like Baywatch Nights during um, during the day, of course. Mitch Buchanan works as the lifeguard, mm. but at night he's a PI. Really? So, uh, because, oh yeah, I don't know when he sleeps. I don't know when he sleeps. <laughs> um, that, thank you very much, Nathaniel. That, I, I'm not going to lie to you. When they say that there was a golden age of TV and we're not in it in 2014. You're slowly going to prove that there was no golden age of TV over the next six months, I imagine. Josh Widdicombe, XFM. We haven't really asked how you're... Uh, what would you... I wanted to ask now, what would you normally be doing on a Sunday morning? 
Uh, I said earlier watching CBeebies. Oh, yeah, you did. But, I, I mean, not now still, have you? I just want to get a picture of you throughout the morning. I would um, probably be emptying the dishwasher about now because I put it on after breakfast. Then I would... So that's actually a part of your day. I could compartmentalise all of my day. And your dishwasher. And my dishwasher. Shall I keep Do you comment, compartmentalise your day like the guy in About a Boy? Half hour segments. So what? So keep going. Um, and then... I'd so how long do you allow for unloading the dishwasher? It varies if we put it on an eco wash or a full wash. Well, what's the difference? Half Whether wash. you care about the planet or not. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, Why then, would you ever do half wash? Just wait until it's full and then wash. We've only got a select amount of knives and forks in my house. How many knives and forks? <laughs> Are you the opposite of Alanis Morissette? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. What, how many knives and forks have you got? Uh, One each. I can't think off the top of my head. Well, is it, in, is it single figures or double figures? Probably single figures. Yeah, but same... Uh, and there's only three people living in your house. One of them's not going to be using a knife and fork. No, but... Look, I, right, this is astonishing. We've only got so many glasses yeah, as well. I, I, I just... I mean, we sh we did nail aid for the stickers. I'm now <laughs> feeling like we should bring a thing where we give you a full cup. How many how many mugs have you got? About six. Six? What is that all? We don't have many visitors. Then what's your issue with? Oh, let's move on. Right. I was going to give you the rest. of my Oh day. yeah, no, give me the rest of your day. Give me the rest of your day. Might find some DIY to do. Oh yeah. Do the dusting. Maybe you should make a fork. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to go and get the big shop. The big shop, oh, yeah. If it, if it feels but, like, you could... When you're doing the big shop at, like, one of those massive... What, which supermarket do you go to? Depends what I've got vouchers for. No! Yeah, why? Are you a 50-year-old woman? <laughs> what, well, an 80-year-old woman, yeah? If I've had an email from, say, a supermarket that does click and collect... I might like, click and collect? So you order your shopping online, someone else goes around the shop and gets it for you. And then oh, you and then you've got more time to unload the dishwasher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do some treats? Yeah, go on then. Well, we've got, we've had a we've had a development on the um, on the, the creases in the genes story. Uh, to fill in, uh, we had a man tweeted in that he um, takes his trousers off when he sits down to go to the toilet, even if he's out. Mr. David he Beard. Like, Mr. David Beard. He doesn't like creases in his genes. And um, someone's asked. Uh, it's now become uh, this person's tagged this hashtag intrigued. <laughs> Which, uh, does this guy take his pants off to drive too? Had to stop the car to ask this. Presumably in American, he means trousers. Does it... I like the fact the person stopped the car. I hope they're on the M25 or something. Does this guy... Probably stopped anywhere if they're on the M25, am I right, guys? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Do you get it? Traffic. Hashtag traffic. Um, does this guy take his trousers off to drive? We, we, we have to throw that one out to David Beard again. Well, I can answer this. Can you? Yeah, he would say no because it's more the action of oh yeah, of course, being creased around his ankles. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, when he's sitting, the the jeans are stretched over the knee, so there's going to be no creases there. Yeah. <laughs> I am really dull. No, no, it's, it's correct. And um, on the um, on the minor irritations, uh, a quick one which I totally agree with. Scott, this is from David Glynn. Sky Sports News HQ changing... You don't need to call it Sky Sports News HQ. They've rebranded. We don't need to follow them. That's like going, I really hate in the FIFA World Cup. Um, well, sport, Sky Sports News changing the channel code to all the sports channels. Sky Sports 1's code is now 402. Absolutely. Do you know what? I said earlier people were saying about Capital Point. I'm going to hit the mic. That's how annoyed I am. <laughs> That might have better sound than I thought. Oh, that is good. We need to incorporate that more. <laughs> Anger, mate. Sky Sports News 5 is now 406. He's continued the point. We get the point. Basically, Sky, you know, Rupert Murdoch's done some things this time, but this really is the final straw. Josh Whittaker. Podcast. Joined now by um, star of Live at the Apollo, Mock the Week. Uh, Etc. Kevin all Bridges. Stars of those, aren't we? We're all stars of those. Yeah. <laughs> no, no one is an <laughs> extra passenger on <laughs> ornament too. I think <laughs> is about as much as a foil. <laughs> uh, Simon Evans. Good morning. Good morning, Josh. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for coming. What would you normally be doing on a Sunday at this time? Um, 
God, there is no normal, is there? In, in uh, my life, probably not in yours either. Well, no, no, there is now because you've got this job, so you can actually <laughs> answer that. But that's one of the nice uh, things that appeals about having a radio slot. But 50-50 um, between waking up in, trying to work out which travel lodge I'm in and how far it is to home. Yeah. And, uh, so due to your and, job, presumably. Yeah, exactly. Not due to... <laughs> <laughs> not because of the high Blacked life. out. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to on a motorway again. <laughs> oh, no, not again. I don't think. <laughs> Um, and, and yeah, and probably take my kids to the park, something like that. Yeah. that I mean, that does sound... Uh, the second option sounds preferable. Do, does it matter if I take... Yeah, I take the headphones off. Yeah, yeah it's just, just making me loud. Yeah, the, 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 ki the kids in the park thing I have been enjoying lately, because they're, uh, they're seven and ten now, which is okay. For a few years, I used to go for the travel lodge option. If it was available. <laughs> just keep out of the way for five years. Yeah, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> right. Let someone it else be so annoying strong. and not really up for uh, cycling or rock climbing or any of those kind of things, but we're starting to get onto some decent... So, kind of so did you cycle here today? No, but I, I, well, I'm staying with a friend. I've got some shows on at the Soho Theatre, yeah. and so I'm staying with a friend up in Golders Green. Oh, and, very nice. Uh, and then I had a bike stolen on Tuesday. Bad. <sighs> it's been a bad week. Bike stolen on Tuesday. Yeah. Phone fell out of my pocket last night. So where did your phone fall out of his pocket? Uh, Camden, I think. Camden. I remember getting it out and looking at it in that kind of neurotic way that you do at every set of traffic yeah. lights. Um, so I remember that was the last time I looked at it. Nothing to see. Put it you back can do pocket. an on-air appeal if you want. I well, I've t yes. If you spot it, it it is notable because it was a, is a, uh, the Samsung Galaxy S3, which is kind of obsolete, and it was out of contract. But it had the big fat extra battery pack on the back. Oh. So it, yeah, that was the thing that hurt. That oh, was the thing I'm yeah. <laughs> I, I really like that extra battery pack. It made me look like I was maybe like one of those AA guys or something. You know, so <laughs> could probably restart a car with that. You know, well, if I had to think it It would be amazing if it as worked. Soon as as I realised it was gone, I pulled up on my bike and asked a man who was just walking up the street if I could borrow his mobile phone, and he mm. asked me to get off his bike, off my bike first, which I thought was very sensible of him, and I was yeah. impressed by that. So I did that, and um, then ran off with the phone. <laughs> and that was how I lost the bike. But, uh, no, <laughs> hadn't thought it through. But um, no, I phoned, I phoned my phone, and it was already switched off. So it had mm. either been, to, uh. you know, it either been dismantled by someone who knew what they were doing, or been run over by a truck. And I think probably at midnight in Camden probably run over by a truck. I mean, that's, I that's, know, yeah. Yeah, if you look at the positives, <laughs> what I liked is that you got to the door here, you didn't have your phone to know no. how to get in, so you tweeted us from your iPad. That's right, yes. I mean, you have to work circumlocutous routes to Yeah. Yes, when when we saw that, we were questioning whether... You just, we didn't know how you tweeted, so we thought you might have just set the tweet up to yeah. send at a certain point <laughs> when you got there. <laughs> no, I have got a 4G iPad, and oh. it's very useful. I'm wondering now whether I need a phone, actually. Because yeah. you can just stop people in the street and ask them to use their phone. That turns out to be <laughs> doable. And, uh, and I quite like months. the fact that my wife would go, well, 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 I can't get hold of you. Mm, yeah, I'm sorry, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you can tweet me. <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. Exactly. <laughs> Josh Whittaker. How good it was, Cortina's Josh Whittacombe show on Sunday morning XFM. Still joined by Simon Evans. Good morning. Good morning. And you were you were getting a bit miffed at the spelling of Cortina's. Yeah, just handed the play sheet and Cortina. They don't know how it's spelt. They've heard no, about Cortina's. <laughs> they haven't, they haven't done the research. Done the research. <laughs> they haven't done the reading. Well, I sp I don't know. Maybe this. Maybe the Ford spelt. But it used to be. My dad used to drive a Cortina. It was spelled C O R T I N A. When would that have been? The seventies. Uh, when we grew, when I was first aware of us having a car, there was a Cortina, and that was a Mark II, and I think it was upgraded to a Mark III and about. 1973, yeah. I think my dad used to drive a Cortina because we used to have second-hand cars. I don't know anything about cars, but we used to have... In fact, another band ended up named... There was a car called the Datsuns. Yeah. Was Datsun Cherry? Well, Datsun was a very pop. That was one of the most. They became Nissan. Datsun. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, it, well, the after they Cherry become this, the biggest selling car in the world, like the uh, the uh, there was a Toyota one that was for the Corolla. I think those two. Uh, were the after biggest, they'd yeah. become the biggest selling car in the world, ten years later, my dad got hold of one. <laughs> <and> started driving. <laughs> <laughs> we were. We were. My dad made the decision that if you buy a cheap car for a year every year, yeah. That's a better investment, and I think that is incorrect. I don't know whether it's true or not, but I do think as dads, you have to make decisions like that at some point. <laughs> yeah. You have to just stick to them. I mean, I made a similar decision, which was you just buy... I bought a Mercedes, which is an mm. expensive car, but the idea was I would keep it because it would last forever, and I don't know that that's been a, a good idea either. And how long have you had it? I've had it ten years now, well, and it's, it's doing all right, but uh, but it's been quite expensive to keep maintained, in fact. So that's better than ten Datsun Cherries, yeah. surely. <laughs> Throughout that time, I have at least driven a Mercedes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, um, Simon, I want your views on this. We've, we had, a, we were talking about um, 
I'll take you back to the start of this story. Yeah. Neil want, uh, was asking for text on your minor irritants, and then someone tweeted in that he was annoyed with himself um, because he's got a habit, and I want your views on this. His, his habit, uh, how would you say it, Neil? If you describe it, he decides that... Um, i got to take these headphones off because they're, they're, they're warping. Okay. <laughs> um, so um, what he does is um, he can't wear... He wears jeans, but when he goes sitting down to the toilet, he has to take them off whether he's in public or not. Because uh, he's when worried about... public is when he's sitting... Wait, 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 in a public toilet. No, no, oh, no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> yeah, no. He doesn't squat down in the street and go... It's well, like I'd... me waking up in a travel room. <laughs> <laughs> Whether he's in... Suddenly, he go, oh, no, it's... <laughs> <laughs> the problem here is I haven't got my jeans on. Um, no, the, um, if he's going to the toilet sitting yeah. down, he'll take his jeans off. All the way off, over All the way off, off over... Shoes, yeah. uh, because he's worried about creasing the knees. Oh, that's a bit silly. And he's just, tw he's tweeted in, that it, this became a discussion point, he's tweeted in, I can't believe I'm the only person who does this. Yeah, you are. You yeah. are. Yeah, that <laughs> is. <laughs> now, For you're... that reason, at any rate, yeah, I mean, there are all sorts of other neurotic things to do with public toilets, aren't there, but, uh, you know. Do you, do you use public toilets? I'm oh, happy, I'm completely okay with the whole thing. I'm fine, but I do, I, I don't know how vulgar you want to get about this. No. I learned how to, uh, I, I learned the proper position to adopt. I've, uh, I've a, been a told that, yeah. Ago, do you do I, it? Yeah, I do, always. Do you? Yeah. And it actually, it gets rid of the whole public toilet fear as well, of course. Yeah. Because it means your buttocks never make contact yeah. with anything anyone else's buttocks have made contact with. Are you aware of the... No. The sort of, you know, the squat that you'll have squat. seen uh, the Bedouin do in the desert, you know, and, yeah. and this is why you used to get just two foot plates in France. Until oh. quite recently, you weren't supposed to sort of adopt the same position on those that, as if a, a, a ghost toilet were beneath <laughs> you. You, sort of, you get right down so that your thighs are resting on the back of your of your Achilles tendon, pretty much. Yeah. I didn't know people actually... Yeah, yeah it's good. And it's very much healthier, and, and it's, you know, I, I find... This, uh, is, this very, has become know, a very yeah. informative discussion. I know, but it's, it is... It, people feel a little bit queasy talking about it. I but do. It is, I, genuinely think it's one of those things that if you could disseminate this and it, people would be healthier and you, you're far less likely to I experience feel, I, feel, I feel like we're doing a service. Yeah. Yeah. I've got an yeah. exciting afternoon at London Paddington train station. <laughs> but up. what it will do is it will crease the knees of your jeans quite badly. <laughs> 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 about that. That's, it won't solve that issue. We, we will talk to you about uh, minor irritants. Also, we've been talking about um, your worst flatmates or people you've lived with. We will come to that. That before. would be me in well, almost every flat I've ever shared, I'm afraid. I'm looking forward to that. We'll, yes. we'll come to that. <laughs> Is he squatting on the toilet again? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if whether we want to recap the whole of the last link, but let's just say about uh, different positions you can take on the toilet. Yeah. Hillary... So say lavatory. You are we'll lavatory. Say lavatory. We'll say lavatory. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> My gran used to have... That was her biggest bugbear was uh, the word toilet. People using the wrong word for toilet is, is, is the single biggest, it's like a class thing, isn't it? It is, it really you is. Know, and it does mind, but I'm perfectly fine with toilet, but my wife genuinely does kind of try and steer it back on the <laughs> <laughs> She's not talking about it. Uh, now, uh, Hillary, and uh, we, she has used the word toilet, uh, <laughs> so brace yourselves. You, yeah. you, we know what class this is from. <laughs> um, we ran a bar in Spain. There was a Belgian lady who always left footprints on the toilet seat. Wow. Love, love the show, Hillary, Three Kisses. Bit intense. <laughs> <laughs> Can't it's not appropriate Hillary. to kiss after no. the remark like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I, Tonal we, shift. Was do you, do you, well, I, I mean, I never thought we'd get into this. Particularly, this has all come from the, the guy taking his trousers off. Yeah. Um, do, do you wipe down the seat afterwards? After you've sat, public, stood on yeah, the toilet yeah, seat? Or yeah, or whatever, yeah. I mean, at home, I'm just, you know, slippers and stuff anyway, so it's yeah. fine, yeah. I, I'm going to start uh, to get my 30 p's worth. Yeah. Just leaving footprints in different parts of the toilet cube. This is in railway a, in stations. Station. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I always make sure I've used the tr the, the track. I set my alarm. <laughs> <laughs> on a long journey to get, Do you? Use, use the train before you get off. Wow. Because yeah, yeah. I quite like the 30p, because then I feel like I can really, like... Take your time. Take my time. <laughs> get my money's worth. Have your sandwiches. I tell you what, <laughs> what I've never used is the £5 shower. Wow, I didn't know there was such no. a thing. There's one at Paddington, £5 pounds for shower. Yeah, no, that's a bit much. It's, it's not really on, is it? No. <laughs> a couple of wet wipes. <laughs> Set your alarm. <laughs> Three wet wipes on the train. Have a quick sniff as before you chuck them away. <laughs> Make sure they've cleaned it up. Um, it's got very, it's got very uh, well, coarse today. Well, hasn't that's it? how travelling life is, isn't yeah, it? This is it, the it, truth of it. Yeah. If someone had said to me, uh, wh which episode do you think will go down uh, <laughs> yeah. go down this path? I would have said the Simon Evans you think episode. You'd be talking about Moleskin versus Cordwell. <laughs> <Yeah, that's laughs> <it. laughs> Josh. Widdicombe. Yes. XFM. 
trash, suede, Josh Whittacom show on XFM on a Sunday morning. Did you know, by the way, his, uh, the bass player is yes. Richard's brother. Richard Osmond's brother, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was astonished. No, is he tall, the bass player? Oh, Matt's very tall. Is, is he? he? Yeah. Well, that'd be good. He'd be a good, uh, pointless celebrity. Oh, it'd be good. Yes. <laughs> I did, have you done pointless celebrity? No, I haven't. I would love to do that. I, I did it, like, I, mine was on on Saturday. In fact, this is the first show I've done since it was screened. Really? And, uh, we won. Well done. Excellent. Thank you. It was yeah. the probably. And I rewatched it, right, and I've never looked so stressed on <laughs> television in my life. Were you partnered with somebody? Yeah, I was with Sarah Pascoe, okay. uh, in a comedian special. Um, yeah. So, uh, we were up against the big guns, uh, Sue Pollard and Ruth Maddock. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Very high double, wow. And, uh, Leslie Joseph and Linda Robson. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, Ronnie Ancona and Phil Cornwall, who went out first round because okay. he got a wrong answer. Ronnie always looks like she would, like, have some kind of almost sparky kind of lateral approach yeah, at the moment. Yeah, but yeah. she didn't get a chance because Phil Cornwall got a wrong answer straight away, so oh, they're basically right. done for. Uh. But <laughs> I'd say the longest 20 minutes of my life was when I'd stand there while the researcher attempted again and again to explain the rules to Pointless to Sue Pollard. <laughs> <laughs> there, was just, there was just no way it was happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless no, uh, we were talking. We, we, our, our conversation had... Uh, I was going to say deteriorated. That's that's the wrong <laughs> way. To, but it had gone down the path of um, of um, of the saving money with the toilet with the, the toilet at the station. Yeah. Now I um, you, you're quite you're quite into saving money. Is that um, yeah? Fair? I am a bit of a bargain hunter. Yeah. It's it's um, I think it's one of those things that gets drilled into at a certain age, isn't it? Mm. You can't shake it off. There's no real rational reason for it. And in fact, I buy. I mean, not to say that I'm you know I'm I'm wealthy, but actually you know it's it's kind of more like a mental dysfunction. Right. Than anything yeah. That worked out. But it's a good one to have, I suppose. Yeah. It's you, okay. I I end up buying loads of you know buying the the thing that's on sale quite often rather than the thing I want, and then yeah. going back the following week and buying the thing I actually. Want. Now, um, I'd say the biggest uh, illustration of this that I've seen yeah. is um, when I was with you once and you took some pants back to Primark. Uh, no, it was TK, TK, TK Max. TK Max, sorry, yeah, yeah. TK Max. This was when we were... Because you tried we them filming, on. You tried yeah, them on. I did, but we were filming... Um, <laughs> Uh, stand up for the week. Stand up for the week, and we were in the Grand in Clapham Junction. Yeah. There was a TK Maxx just around the corner, and all day on Wednesday, as you remember, we had nothing to do except yeah. it was a kind of brief rehearsal and then hours to kill. I'd go into TK Maxx every week, <laughs> and I was, I'd bought as many ties and sweaters as I could possibly justify. <laughs> but yeah, I saw some. I saw some. They, what they sell in TK Maxx in, t in the pants department is they sell all those ones that have guys with extraordinary, you know, abdominal, yeah. uh, well-defined muscles. I'm glad you said abdominal. Pictures, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so you just can't go. Wow, I would look amazing in those hands. <laughs> <laughs> no, that doesn't. But they, you never get a, an accurate description of the size, so they are basically... So you try, took them out, tried them do? on and then returned them? Yeah, yeah, I did do that, yeah. I mean, try, I didn't, I didn't them wear on. them for a day or anything. No, you know, no. <laughs> What's your feelings on the morals of this, Neil? Where do you used to, as a money saver yourself... I mean, you look very hygienic, Simon. But I, I did make sure that I had there. Were, yeah, it was a. They were dry and properly powdered uh, parts that were inserted <laughs> into the pants. <laughs> I, I've. Have, have you ever taken anything back now? Oh, I always take loads of stuff back. Do you? Yeah. You have to if you buy in those kind of shops. It's understood. There's a, it's a, you kind of there's, there's a churn. You know, if you if you if you're actually keeping twenty percent of what you buy at any. Any yeah. moment, you know, that's fine. In fact, I went to a job interview once and had just a shirt and tie. But oh, right. <laughs> 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 and a V-neck. I left, uh, left some footprints on the, on the toilet. That was the... <laughs> uh, and a V-neck. And I knew I would never wear the V-neck outside the interview, so I left a tag in it. Nice. And During the job after, interview? Yeah, I took it back after. Did you get the job? No, I didn't. No, you see, <laughs> I think that's probably why. I think they, on the way out, they went, it's got to be <laughs> <laughs> I beat it as I went out. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever tried, oh, oh this was, uh, <laughs> this is a digression, but have you ever tried returning something because it's got the beeper still attached? No. I had to do this. Yeah. But it was on a shopping trip, and it was like the, the last thing I was going to do. But yeah. every shop I was going yeah, into. Yeah. <laughs> I was setting off. It's just, it's I had a pair of swimming uh, trunks that I bought in um, Brixton mm. and, um, and immediately went on holiday with. And it wasn't until I got them out uh, at my holiday destination I realised that big brown plastic <laughs> thing. It's kind of bolted on. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. There's no way of opening it. With <laughs> that. So I had to swim in the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Did they be, <laughs> looking like there was something unfortunate? <laughs> <laughs> did you then take it back to have it taken off when you get returned, or did you just write them off? You know, I honestly can't remember. I must have done, mustn't I? Yeah, yeah, I think I did, yeah. I, I think I'd study at some point. I think uh, somebody in the hotel, I think maybe the concierge managed to get hold of some proper pliers or something. And they kind of like <laughs> bolt cutters and they removed them. Yeah. I think this is one for next week. Well, next week we'll do ways, the ways you've saved money. <laughs> <laughs> I did actually suggest, though, to the woman in, who did wardrobe mm. for stand up for the week that I said, there's this jacket. I could get it and I could wear it on the show and take it back. And it's just like it. <laughs> and then take it did back. Did there be someone. She, from... was, she was morally outraged yeah. at that, you know, working in wardrobe. She there was um, someone at TK Maxx watching the show going, I recognise that jacket. <laughs> Josh Whittaker. Podcast. XFM. 41 Fat Lip, which more or less brings us to the end of the first Sunday Josh Whittaker show. It's been a successful move, hasn't it, Neil? So far. So far. Well, we've got one link to ruin it. Um, Simon <laughs> Evans, this is your chance to plug. Okay. Normally, on Saturday, we just do the plugs. We're worried that, because um, we moved to Sunday, we're competing with Channel 4's Sunday brunch. Don't switch over. And, um... So what have you prepared for us, Neil? Well, I'm going to play the role of Simon Rimmer, who's the chef. So I'm going to cook something during your um, plugging, okay. Simon. And then you can try it at the end if you want to. Yeah, fantastic. And what have you got to cook? Uh, some Dairyly Lunchables. Oh, very nice. Okay. Very nice. So, <laughs> you start so you're going to start taking us through it? Yes, yeah, so you start off by opening the packet. Okay, well, um, Simon, so... He's done that before, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you're off on tour. You're doing the Soho Theatre. Soho Theatre next week, Tuesday through to Saturday, every evening at 7.30. So yep. there are tickets available for that. That's Cabaret the room, best Leashed. room. It's, it's a room. really lovely room, as we were discussing earlier. It has a kind of jazzy, after-hours feel down there. Very nice room. Very nice. And I'd like to go through the tour dates like I'm Steve Wright. Oh, you don't want to do them all, Bedford, you? Folkestone, <laughs> Sheffield, Tunbridge Wells, Banbury, Aldershot, Wolverhampton, Tring, Cardigan, Swindon, Canterbury, Radley, at Guildford, Coventry, Nottingham, Oxford, Deal, Portsmouth, Birmingham, Dorchester. But the most important, we'll come to that. How's the Derryly Lunchable doing? It's good, yeah. I'm uh, I'm just deciding how I want to kind of put it together. Do I want ham on top or cheese on top? I mean, these are, these are decisions you can make by you yourself. You can have ham and ham on one side and cheese on the other side. Oh, you can make a, you make can, a sort of reverse sandwich. You can make a reverse sandwich. <laughs> oh wow! Right back to uh, so on. This is working really well. I'm what enjoying it. Decker. Uh, September the 15th, this is yeah. the important date. That's my big one. That's the DVD record, and that's at the Brighton Theatre Royal. Theatre Royal in Brighton. Uh, main Theatre Royal will be in large letters on the DV case. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> in small letters, but yeah. So that'll be, and that DVD will be out for Christmas. Hoping so, yeah. Buy tickets for the Theatre Royal September the 15th if you live in the Brighton and Hove that. and that's, area. That's my, the best of my 16 years of stand-up. Everything I'm going to throw at that from... Uh, the best it, of? Yeah. From taking pants back to... <laughs> <laughs> to sitting on the toilet. Yeah. Uh, Neil, uh, how's the dish come on? It's finished. It's a really accessible dish. Everyone can do it. <laughs> <laughs> really and when nice. would you eat it? Whenever you want, really. What I always think on your own? Is, uh, is who does the washing up, you know, when I watch those things. Is, yes. is that going to be an issue here? <laughs> well, no, I think it's, it's going in. I mean, does anybody want it? No. No, I'm all right, thanks. Better luck next week, Neil. Uh, thank you very much uh, for <laughs> listening. Uh, thank you uh, to Intern Charles. Thank you, Producer Neil. Thank you, Simon Evans, for thank coming you in. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, September the 15th, Theatre Royal.